Following our previous video, in which we talked about the foods that can be dangerous to our dogs, a lot of people asked us why we classified artificial bones, made of rawhide dangerous in this category and why we talked about them quite condemningly. Several of you have also asked us to talk about all of this in a little more detailed way so that you can be aware of these dangers. Well, in this short introductory section, we'll try to shed some light on what exactly a rawhide bone is, what is it made of, and finally, how it's made before it gets on the shelves of dog stores. To stay up to date with more videos and get instant notifications of new parts, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button as well. Before we get into things, we want to say that we are generally not against dog foods and kibbles and we understand its usefulness and convenience in most cases. There are both premium and terribly low quality dog foods and if one chooses to give a dog any of these, there are plenty to choose from. At the same time, it is worth knowing that the pet food industry, or pet food production, has become a huge, multi-billion dollar business that is currently estimated to reach $115 billion in sales by 2025. The enormous amount of capital that these manufacturing companies represent, of course, also means huge marketing expenses, which, in many ways, are used and if someone just watches only these, they may not make good decisions. There is an example, and not one, that products from leading, well-known brands whose ads run primetime on commercial TVs have less than 5% meat content. There is almost a complete agreement in the literature on dog foods and dietary supplements that the most harmful of these types of foods produced by modern industry is the range of artificial bones, which we usually call rawhide products. These products are advertised by the manufacturers as excellent for grooming dogs, for strengthening chewing muscles and dispelling boredom in dogs. Few know that this product line was born because it was a solution to one of the overlifting crises in the modern meat and skin industry and a cheap raw material for dog food manufacturers. When an animal, mostly beef, is processed in a slaughterhouses, two things happen to its skin. The upper, hard layer migrates further to the leather industry, where it is produced to become bags, coats and car seat covers, and the inner, softer, so-called raw layer is delivered to pet food manufacturers and being transformed into artificial bones in a processing process. How does it all happen? The skins are treated primarily with an ash alkali solution and the highly toxic sodium sulfide lime to preserve them on the one hand and to make it easier to remove the fur from the skin surface on the other hand. Rawhide, the inner layer of the skin, then undergoes a whitening process with various whitening compounds, and in many cases hydrogen peroxide, which is also not known for its environmental friendliness, or being healthy. This is followed by cutting and further treatment of chemically treated rawhide in order to sell well in dog shops. In the process, artificial flavors and dyes are used to achieve the overall effect desired by the consumer. If the goal is to achieve a beautiful white, bone-like effect, dyes containing titanium oxide are often used. In the final stage of production, various adhesives are used to form the final shape of the product, which is mostly bone-shaped, but can be chopsticks and anything else the manufacturer's marketing department deems appropriate. In these adhesives and end products, U. S. Studies have in many cases found residues and elements of lead, arsenic, mercury, and formaldehyde. After that, the product gets a nice and tasty packaging and goes to the stores and then to the dogs. In light of the above, it may have become clear to you why the use of artificial bones made of rawhide is not recommended for our dogs, especially as we have not mentioned the digestive and intestinal obstruction problems of a chewed and swollen artificial bone, often swallowed in large chunks. When it comes to cleaning and strengthening the masticatory muscles, almost every butcher sells beef tibia for example, which is perfectly suited for these purposes and, moreover, poses no danger to our dogs. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell button as well. Thank you very much for your attention.